Hey guys, in this video I'm going to cover comparing and ordering fractions. This is when you look at two fractions and you're asked to compare them using greater than, less than, or equal to. So there's a couple different methods that work to do this. I'm going to start off with one-fourth and one-sixth. Now some people may be able to look at these <clears throat> two fractions and automatically know that one-fourth is bigger than one-sixth because if they're both one piece, a whole cut into four pieces is bigger than a whole cut into six pieces if I'm given just one slice. You can imagine a pizza cut into four slices and a pizza cut into six slices. One slice of the four cut pizza is going to be bigger than one slice of the six cut pizza. But I'm going to show you how to compare and order fractions using like or common denominators. So first you need to look at your two denominators. I'm looking at four and six. And you need to think about their multiples. I usually go for the bigger number first, and I think of the bigger number's multiples, and then I try to figure out which of those multiples is also a multiple of 4. So if I look at 6, I'm thinking, okay, 6, 12, 12 actually works for 4, it's the second one I said, so I'm going to change both of these fractions to twelfths. I'm going to make equivalent fractions where they're both over 12. So in order to do that, if you remember making equivalent fractions, I have to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the same number. So in order to get 6 to be 12, I need to do times 2. Because I changed the denominator by times 2, I'm going to do it also for the numerator. So the new numerator will be 2, because 1 times 2 is 2. So 1 sixth is 2 twelfths. And then over here, in order to get 4 to be twelfths, I need to do times 3. So I'm going to do 1 times 3. And again, you can see my denominator is going to be, sorry, I keep switching colors, 3. Once the denominators are the same, you can just look at the numerators and compare them. 3 is greater than 2. 3 twelfths is more twelfths than 2 twelfths. So therefore, that would be greater. And then going back up here, 1 fourth would be greater than one sixth. Let's look at more examples. So here I have two thirds and seven twelfths. Again, I'm going to think about, they're both over a half if you look at this. So I'm going to look at 12, think of the multiples of 12, 12, wait a minute, doesn't 3 go into 12? Can I multiply 3 and get 12? So this is an example where I won't even change the seven twelfths. I'll just leave that as seven twelfths. But then the two thirds that's going to have to be changed into twelfths. In order to get 3 to be 12, I need to do times 4, and that'll be 12. And of course, i got to do the same thing to my numerator, because these are fractions. So I'll get the 12 in the denominator, and then 2 times 4 gives me 8 in the numerator. So that means I have 8 twelfths and 7 twelfths, and 8 twelfths is more. So that means that 2 thirds is greater than seven twelfths. In my next example, I have three and seven eighths compared to three and eleven twelfths. Now this example looks different because these are mixed numbers and the fraction has a whole number in front of it, but if you look at the two whole numbers, they're the same in this example. If one of the whole numbers was bigger, then that would be a bigger fraction. For example, if this was four and seven eighths, well that would automatically be bigger because there's more holes in four than three. But since they're both 3, you can ign completely ignore the whole numbers and only look at the fractions. I'm comparing 7 eighths and 11 twelfths. They both have 3 holes, but which is bigger, 7 eighths or 11 twelfths? So, again, I'm going to think about their lowest common denominator, or LCM, least common multiple of the denom denominators. I go for the bigger number first. 12 is the first multiple, but 8 won't go into 12. So 12 times 2 is 24, 8 does go into 24, so I'm going to change this to 3 and something 24ths, and this one will also be 3 and something 24ths. Now again, you have to change the numerator, so you've got to think, okay, what did I multiply 8 by to get to 24? 8 times 3 is 24, so 7 times 3 will give me 21. So I put 21. 21sts. And then over here, I did 12 times 2 to get to 24, so I'm going to do 11 times 
22. And so that'll be 22. And then you can see I have 3 and 21 24ths versus 3 and 22 24ths. So this one on the right is bigger. 3 and 11 twelfths is a greater fraction. Now in the next example, your minds may be blown. Here I have 7 eighteenths and 11 twenty-sevenths. Now this is an example where when you look at the denominators, it's very hard to think of multiples that work. So what I'm going to use is the division ladder. Now I've used this to find least common multiple. Now I'm going to use it to find the least common multiple of just the denominators. So I'm going to put 18 and 27 into a division ladder. Now if you don't know what this is, you need to watch least common multiple. So I'm looking at just 18 and 27. I'm completely ignoring the numerators. I'm only looking at 18 and 27. And I'm thinking, all right, what numbers go into both 18 and 27? There's a couple to choose from. Let's say the first thing you noticed was uh, 3 goes in. Okay, 3 goes into 18 6 times, and 3 goes into 27 9 times. And then you notice, hey, 6 and 9 both can be divided by 3. Again, that's twice, and that is 3 times. Now, 2 and 3 don't have any common factors other than 1, so my ladder is complete. I could have just done a 9, and I would have gotten 2 and 3 right away. Now that your ladder is done, here's where people's minds get blown. Go to the bottommost number 2. Remember, we're finding least common multiple, so we're going to draw a line diagonally over to the top number, which is 27. That means 27 times 2 should be the least common multiple. And the same goes for the 3. I'll go to the bottom number on the left column, the 3, and draw a line to the denominator on the other side. Both 18 times 3 and 27 times 2 will be the same number. Now, I'm not really sure what that number is, so I'm going to go off to the side. And you can pick either one. This is how you find least common multiple. You can either do 27 times 2 or 18 times 3. I'm going to do the 27 times 2. 14, carry my 1, 4, and 5, it's 54. So my denominator is going to be 54 for both of them. Let me write that down here. 54, 54. Now I have to put a box in the middle to compare. I still have to find my numerator, so I'm going to go back up. And remember, if you look at the old examples, we always times the numerator and the denominator by the same number. So since I did 18 times 3, I'm going to do 7 times 3, and that's 21, and that goes in my numerator over here. And then because I did 27 times 2, I have to do 11 times 2, which is 22. And then if you look, now I'm dealing with 21 54ths and 22 54ths. This one's a little bit bigger. It's only 1 54th bigger but it counts. So that means if I go all the way back up, 11 27 is just a little bit bigger than 7 18. It's only bigger by 1 54th, but it is bigger. So this is a method that you can use if you can't automatically think of the multiples. This works if you can't think of the multiples on your own. Now, the last example I'm going to show is ordering from least to greatest. So here I have three fractions, two-thirds, five-sixths, thirteen-fifteenths. Now, in order to do these, you have to, again, give them all the same denominators. So I'm going to write common denominators for all of these. Now, the latter won't work here. So if you can't automatically think about the, what the least common multiple of three, six, and fifteen is, then you're going to have to do the prime factorization method, which takes a long time, but it works. So if you don't know what it is, then you're going to have to do the prime factorization method to find it. Now I'm going to do a little bit of a different method. I'm going to list the factors, but I'm, or the multiples, but I'm going to list them kind of in my head. So I'm going to start with 15. I'm going to say, okay, because that's the biggest number. Start with the biggest number. 15. Does any of these numbers go into 15? Yes, 3 goes into 15. Okay, but 6 doesn't, so that can't be it. So I'm going to go to the next multiple of 15, which is 30. 
15 times 2 is 30. 3 goes into 30, and 6 goes into 30. Since all of these numbers work for 30, that's what my denominator is going to be. Now here comes the harder part. Now you have to actually think, okay, how did I get 30 here? So with 3, how do I get 30? I multiply by 10. That's how I get 30. That's a 10. It's a bad 10. So I'm going to do 2 times 10, which is 20. So 2 thirds is the same thing as 20 thirtieths. Makes sense. And then for my 6, in order to get 6 to be 30, I had to do times 5. So I got to do the numerator times 5. 5 times 5 is 25. So 5 sixths is 25 thirtieths. And then for the 13 fifteenths, I did times 2 to get 15 to be 30. So I'm going to do times 2. And 13 times 2 is 26. So now that I've rewritten all of these, now you can order them based on their numerators. 20, 25, 26. Hey, wait, these are already in order. So once you see the order, they might be in a different order. This one goes in order. But you're going to start with the smallest. That's 2 thirds. Rewrite it. 2 thirds is the smallest. The next one is 25 thirtieths. That's 5 sixths. And then the last one is 26 thirtieths, which is 13 fifteenths. Now they won't always already be in order, so be careful, but it's possible. So be careful for that. Oh, well, not 13 fifteenths, it was 13 fifteenths. I said 13 thirtieths. Anyway, there we go. So there you have it. That's how you order fractions, and that's how you compare fractions using common denominators. Have fun!